This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management for video editing. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, we take a close look at Kino from Less Pain Software. The website to learn more is lesspain.software slash Kino slash uh, costs $159 US. You buy it direct from their website and there is a free trial available. The key features are that it's integrated with both Final Cut Pro 10 and Premiere Pro CC. It doesn't require ingest, which means it generates very fast previews and thumbnails. There's extensive media tagging with a very fast search and export to Excel. There's flexible automated and manual media transcoding, including subclipping. It has a built-in media viewer, and my favorite features are called drill down and transcoding. Let's take a look at the demo. When you start Kino for the first time, this is what it looks like. The sidebar on the left lists all the devices that are attached to your computer and what are called workspaces. These are specific folders that you designate that you're in all the time. Now, on my second drive is a folder that stores all the media that I use for training. And when I click on this, nothing happens because you'd say, oh, I have to import something. Wrong. Here's the magic button. This is magical. It's called drill down. When you click it, it opens up that folder and every folder inside it and every folder inside that. And now I'm looking at 1,500 items stored in all these different folders. And notice how quickly they displayed. Now they're gone. Now they're back. Now they're gone. <laughs> I love this part because I don't have to import anymore. It's an instantaneous preview. And it's dynamic. As I change any of these files, then the display changes as well. So I'm looking at, at lots and lots of different media. And I can simply scroll through here and, and say, well, for instance, show me all of my video images. So I click here and there's my video. Or show me all the audio files that are stored here. And I can just look at the audio files. Or just show me the still images. And I can see the still images. This happens to be an image sequence, which is why it looks like it's so much of the same thing <laughs> because it is. Anyway, we can drill down by different categories of images. Well, let's say, uh, let's go back up to here. Let's just take a look at video. And let's go to Pond 5. We'll just take a look at this particular category. There's Pond 5 images. And there's, there's our still images right here. There's no audio only clips. And I've got lots of video clips. If I double click a clip, let's try this one. It opens up a preview window. Spacebar plays, spacebar stops, and we can set regions. Now, one of the strengths of this is in addition to be able to set and create tags, which I'll talk about in just a second, is imagine you're shooting an interview or imagine you're shooting a uh, reality show or you've got drone footage where you know you've got miles and miles of footage you are never, ever going to use. Type the letter I to set an in. Type the letter O to set an out. We've now set a region the real strength here is I can create a subclip from this. When I create a subclip from this, we'll just call this Dancing Dragon. It gives me a, a poster frame for the in, a poster frame for the out, and the name of the subclip when I see that in the subclip category up here. I can very quickly go through and build multiple subclips out of the same clip. Why? Because I don't have to waste the footage of the entire shoot and bring that into my NLE and transcode it. And No, I can just simply create standalone clips named however I want them named that are subclips. How? By going to the gear icon and say export subclips and now I can say, am I creating an audio file or am I creating something highly compressed for distribution or my favorite editing? I can now transcode into any of these different formats and it will only transcode the subclip, which means I'm not wasting all of my storage space with footage that I'll never need. Well, let's get back to this, this whole idea of tagging. We can look at our thumbnails here as the thumbnail view or the list view or our preview monitor. 
We can see individual subsets of our clips. We can sort it by how recently it's been added to our computer or frame rate or all the other search criteria. But we can also add metadata. Let's go back to some stuff that, do do do, where to go? Amy Campion gave us. This is a company called Antics. They specialize in street dances. And this footage was shot in Brazil. And Amy has graciously shared the footage with us. Notice here, this tells me that I've got tags applied to it, like keywords, and I've created a subclip for it. Let's take a look at uh, this clip right here. And I right mouse click and I say, let's add a tag. Well, what tag do I want? Maybe I want to add a tag of people. So I'm going to say people, double click it, and save changes. And now notice that this indicates that there's a, a tag applied. There's no limit to the number of different keywords that we add, but where the power of this comes in is let's go up to filter. And I want to find every clip that has been tagged by Brazil or dance or people. Well, let's just pick Brazil. There's all of my clips that I've tagged that were shot in Brazil. Hmm. There's a lot of different shots there. Let's take a look at, oh, let's take a look at this one. And notice I've got this dark blue bar right here. That's a, a subclip. And let's create another subclip. Let's say right here. Let's, yeah, let's create a subclip here. Let's say I to set an in, O to set an out. And with that subclip selected, let's go up to here and say create subclip from selection. And uh, we'll call this secondary dance and click OK. When I go to the subclip section, notice that here's my closing dance right up here. And this is my secondary dance right here. I've created these two clips out of the master clip. Now, in this particular case, I don't want to use secondary dance because uh, I'm going to use the closing dance instead. So I'll just right mouse click on it and delete it. It says, you sure? And I'm going to say, yes, I'm gone. Now, I've only flagged this as a subclip. I haven't exported any media for right now. It is a favorite. It's not separate from the master clip. Let's go back up to here. And let's, uh, let's add another search criteria. I want to find all the clips that have subclips associated with them that were shot in Brazil. And now I have five clips. I'm going to select all five clips, just draw a rectangle around them, right mouse click, and I'm going to send them to, I could send them to Final Cut 7 or Premiere, which I'll do in just a minute. In this case, I'm going to start by sending it to Final Cut Pro 10. What are we going to call it? We're going to look in the library called Kino Demo. We're going to create a new event called Dance Media. We'll leave all the files in place. This is exactly the same as Final Cut 10 works. And we're going to have keywords that are based on tags and subclips and folders. And send to Final Cut. Well, Final Cut is running, and that quickly, it loads the media directly into Final Cut. And there's my five clips. Now watch this. This is really cool. I have a project called the Kino Project. I'm going to click here on this clip. But wait a minute. What part of the clip do I want? Well, notice the green bar, which indicates the favorite. Let's change this to be favorites. And now I've created a selects reel based upon the subclips that I marked inside Kino and moved over to Final Cut. I'm going to start with this clip. Command click. Command click, command click, command click, and I've selected those five clips. Click this icon right here to do an append edit to the timeline. And that quickly, I've now created a rough cut in the order that I want the clips that's been edited for me. Now, I'm not saying this is a perfect edit, and I'm not saying you want to do all of your editing inside Kino, but think of it a different way. Imagine, if you will, that you had an assistant editor who's looking through all the dreck that's being shot and finding just the nuggets that you need for your edit, highlights those as a subclip, and now the editor can just, in a heartbeat, pull that stuff in 
and start to really craft a story from it without having to waste all the time setting keywords and setting favorites inside Final Cut. That's what your assistant can easily do inside Kino. Now let's switch back again. Here's this really cool feature. Watch this. Let's say these are the selects and you need to, you need to tell everybody that those are your clips. So let's go to here. This time I'm going to export to Excel. Well, I don't have Excel running on this system. I have numbers. So I'm going to call this export shot list. You can call it anything you want. We can export it either as assets, and this becomes the data that gets exported, or a marker list. And with a marker list, we're able to see starting and ending time code. We'll click OK, and we'll export it. Now let's just hide this. There's our export shot list. Open with numbers. And look what I've created. I have a document which can be printed and sent to people that don't have any media applications on them at all. It lists what the shot is, what the format is, starting time code, ending time code, titles, descriptions. Is that not cool? And just to show you what it looks like. Go to here, export, Excel. This time we'll do an asset list. Leave all the check boxes alone. Right mouse click, open with numbers. And there I've got a thumbnail for each shot, the title of the shot, the clip it came from, a description, a file format, and a keyword tags. Think of how much time it would take to do that manually. Right, I don't want to. And think of how this can simplify your life as you're trying to discuss shot order or scene selection or costumes. I don't know what it is, you, but you know you've always got meetings with people and you want to be able to illustrate it. This makes your life a whole lot easier. We've seen how when I select my clips, right mouse click, I can send it to Final Cut. Let's send these to Premiere. We're going to add the clips if they're not already in my Premiere project. We'll export the subclips. Click OK. That quickly, they're in Premiere. Now I have the individual clip. That's why I have the bizarre clip name. And I have the, the subclip that I created inside Kino. Let's deselect everything. Again, I'm going to start with, uh, let's go to a list view because it makes it easier. I'm going to start with, uh, da -da -da -da. Group dance, hold the command key down, then we'll do the white pants solo, the girl cartweeding, the one hand stand, the closing dance. Grab the clips, drag it on top of the new item. It that quickly, it's built my sequence, match the sequence settings, and we are underway with a rough cut that took me zero time as an editor. My selects are complete, and now I can start to think about what's the best way that I want to put this together. That is cool. There's several other features that I want to mention as part of Kino. One is this advanced transcoding. When I select a clip, a group of clips, or an entire folder and go to convert, I can then select a particular codec. I want to extract audio, compress it to small file size for distribution, transcode it for editing, or rewrap a file like an MXF file into a QuickTime movie, or compress something for the web. When you're compressing, say, for editing, we can specify where we want it to go, what the file name is going to be called. But more importantly, we can look at what our file format settings are, whether we want to retain source time code. We can look at whether we want to change the frame rate, change the image size or the aspect ratio. But this is the one that I want to call attention. In video settings filters, see this. If you have a lot of noise caused by low light, especially in DSLR footage, there's a built-in denoiser that will automatically denoise the clip during transcode so you don't have to worry about doing that later during the edit. The transcoding power inside Kino is just amazing. We can also set audio specs and whether we want to trim to the in and the out of a clip or take the entire clip or something else. Very, very powerful. The program is called Kino. The developer is Les Payne Software at lespain.software slash Kino. And you get to buy it direct. And remember, there's a free trial 
available. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management for video editing. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 227. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, in-depth and easy to view. Plus, premium members can now access sample media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it several times a month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. Thanks.